Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we've got the 2015 Chevrolet Colorado mid-size pickup truck. It's back, it's been on hiatus for a couple of years, leaving Toyota and Nissan to the market all to themselves. But we've got a brand new design here. They still have older designs. And this one, four-door cab, long bed, and the Z71 off-road package. So today I wanna to find out what it's like to live with and how does it perform? And more so, does it really put Toyota and Nissan to the test? To start off with, the Colorado isn't exactly 100% new as a version of it's been sold around the world in other markets, but when GM brought it here, the Colorado got unique styling in its fender's front face and with the cargo box. Like its GMC Canyon brother, the Colorado is built in Kansas City, Missouri and designed with America's eye for brand style. It has squared off and flared wheel arches, a fist in the wind front silhouette and a healthy dose of chrome for the grill. The Colorado is available in two cab configurations, a current, an extended cab, and a crew cab. While a standard cab can be had in other continents, GM has not yet chosen to offer the smaller variation here in North America. Now like Chevrolet's full-size pickup trucks, this also has their step bumper, which makes it nice and easy to get up here into the cargo box. And one thing I want to point out is, this is a four-door cab with a six-foot cargo box. It's something Chevrolet Colorado offers. Most of your compact and mid-size pickup trucks, when you get into that four-door cab, it always shortens up this box, and they only come in one wheelbase, but they offer a 140-inch wheelbase with a long box. Pretty nice. North America also gets its own unique interior, which is much more upscale than global variants. Our Z71 featured four-way power heated seats for both the driver and front passenger, and the larger 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system with MyLink. The center stack is high with simple placement of HVAC, infotainment, and auxiliary controls. There are four USB ports in the cab, not just one, but four. Alas, while there are a number of modern tech touches here, there is no start button. The seating position has a good balance of height for commanding view, but you don't feel perched on top of the truck. Rear seat passengers get plenty of legroom and a high enough seating position for comfort on long rides. The rear seat can fold down in two different ways to allow the area to be used for cargo. You can fold the backs down flat for a carpeted platform in a 60-40 split. Conversely, you can lift up the lower cushions as well for loading of taller items also with that split. Overall, I think they've done a pretty good job on this interior in terms of fit and finish, usability and livability. All the switch gear is within easy reach. It feels of a pretty good high quality. I will admit, however, the design of this dash doesn't quite press my aesthetic buttons. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just doesn't mean I look at this and go, wow, that looks nice. It's just, just not quite my style. There are some hard plastics in here, here and there when you reach around and touch things, but that's par for the course in a pickup truck. One of the things I do like are these seats. I really think it is sort of brave for an American brand to go down the road of offering a leatherette seating surface. Mostly German brands have been doing that and then offering leather as an upgrade. This is the top of the line trim in this truck. Under the hood of our Colorado is the largest available 3.6 liter dual overhead cam V6 with 305 horsepower, 269 pound feet of torque. It's mated to a six speed automatic transmission. You can get the smaller 2.5 liter four cylinder engine in smaller configurations, which offers up to 200 horsepower. Well, I have to say this 3.6 liter V6 actually offers a little bit more than adequate power in this truck, even though it's pretty heavy. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that it does get a little bit thrashy when you rev it out hard. And that really is the same case where you find this engine in the Camaro, a few Cadillacs, uh, and a few other sedans that General Motors puts the same engine in. So uh, nothing different here. It's not so bad that you wouldn't want the engine after all. It is the most powerful and the four cylinders probably not going to be that much more refined than this. I think if you really want to get one of these things with a top motor, wait in another year or so we're going to have that nice Duramax diesel that might be worth the wait. One of the most striking things up here on the Windy Mountain Road is the truck's size and I guess that goes without saying but being a mid-sized truck you don't have all the bulk of a full-size pickup truck and that really is something that has a little bit of confidence and comfort throwing it around up here on these narrower Windy Mountain Roads um, and the tight curves it just it's a lot more maneuverable 
it feels a lot more confident just sort of tossing it left and right in and out of these curves and you just you know you don't feel that extra bulk and granted it still is heavy and it still feels like a truck it's just like less of one I'm out here in one of my favorite places, the Washboard Road out in the desert. It's a great place to see how well put together the chassis and the body structure is on this truck, as well as the suspension and why that is. Even though this isn't hardcore off-roading, this ribbed washboard surface can shake even the best of vehicles, make them rattle, make them shudder, make them feel like a pile. But so far what I'm finding with this one is, it's actually holding together pretty solid. They've done a good job with the suspension, even though it is a, a stiff off-road suspension, it's not causing any kind of shudder and rattle in the body. The dash isn't rattling, and it's just riding pretty nicely. Now I know this isn't a true test of the Colorado Z71's off-road capabilities here on the washboard road, but let's have a look at some footage we shot last fall in San Antonio, Texas, with a nearly identical Colorado playing a little rougher. At the Knibby Ranch, we took the Colorado Z71 through a few challenges ranging from water and mud which put its traction control program to the test. As expected, it did well as this isn't all that hardcore. The Rock Hill, on the other hand, was more a test of the Colorado's all-wheel drive which here was set in four low. The suspension and traction programs did well to keep the truck going in a straight line up the steep rock path without interruption, what you want a truck like this for. Back to the present, the EPA rates our version of the Chevrolet Colorado at 17 MPG City, 24 MPG Highway, and 20 MPG Combined. In our week with the truck, we achieved 21 MPG Combined with not too much effort, just a slight bit more than promised. Summing it up for the Colorado, I have to say my big takeaway, it's the size. I grew up driving full-size pickup trucks and I like full-size pickups, so don't get me wrong, but I'll tell you after spending a week with this, I have to really say I appreciate the downsized nature of it. It's more maneuverable, it's easier to park, and it gets a little bit better fuel economy. So I like it well enough it goes on my I buy it list for 2014. I like it that much. Now as we look at the specs here, there is one thing that's big that price tag, but this is a fully loaded Z71 four-door long bed Colorado. You might look at that price and say, well, gee, I can buy a full-size pickup. You can, but I'll point out, if you were to look at a Silverado Z71 with a four-door cab equipped similar to this, you'd be spending at least seven or $8,000 more, and you can actually go quite a bit higher on that Silverado. So keep that in mind. Now, as we look at the stars, pretty much four stars across the board, and that gives us four stars for the week. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.